Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to deploy a Flask web application at pythonanywhere.com So first I would just invoke the app I have at my local environment So I say python3app.py And this starts the application that I've built uh, for uh, to write one-time scrapers uh, at my local uh, at my local server. So here I can simply say import requests and from bs4 import beautiful soup and create a response object saying requests dot get and say we'll go to http quotes dot scrape dot com and we want to print uh, response dot text okay so here we have our response now we can go right in some some scraping code but that's not the topic of this particular tutorial because I have a lot of one time scrapers so feel free to check them on this channel uh, also, uh, well, basically the, the topic of this video is how to deploy this sort of application at pythonanywhere.com. So first of all, you need to create an account at pythonanywhere.com. And uh, if you will be actually doing that, if you don't yet have an account, please be kind to use the link in the description below the video. That would help to support uh, Comac Against Channel. So I have, uh, I'm a partner of Python Anywhere. So, uh, Basically, Python Anywhere is a sponsor of this particular video, so please uh, use the, that link in the description. So, uh, I need to log in into my Python Anywhere account, and here, uh, what you will actually see at, at the very beginning. So, uh, remember that the username that you use while registering, when signing up to, at pythonanywhere.com would be the name appended to your domain name at pythonanywhere.com in my case this is maximforge.pythonanywhere.com but as you can see here uh, uh, nothing nothing is uh, available here yet so uh, that that's kind of it so uh, the very first thing to consider basically is actually you need to go to the consoles and activate the bash console and also, uh, one of prerequisites to being able to do to do this, you need to have a Git repository of the web application that you're supposed to deploy. And here is the one-time scraper uh, Git repository, Git repository, with, which you can use, of course, uh, for your own purposes. Uh, and here, uh, I just uh, copy this link. And going back to my uh, uh, to my bash console, so if I just uh, execute the last command here, so we're now at uh, so just to make it clear where we are at the moment. So this is the very root of the Linux virtual machine connected to my account. So we are at home, cd home, and the username, the folder represents the username. So cd my username folder and so here this is the current working directory where basically where we start so just right over here we need to execute a simple command uh, git clone git is, is being set up by default at pythonanywhere.com virtual machines which is really cool to my personal opinion and I just paste okay so did, I didn't copy that yet okay just clone and paste Okay, not sure. Okay, just hold on a sec, guys. Okay, so git clone and the path to the to your repository, and I just click enter here. So he downloads the files from the repository just right into the Python Anywhere's server. So I just uh, type the last again. I see the one-time scraper folder has been created. So I just need to cd into that one-time scraper. Just to see what is going on there and by default it shows us that we're in the master branch that's the github specific stuff okay and here is the app folder so cd app and here here basically our file files uh, are being located here 
So this is it uh, at the moment. And now we can just exit from this console and close it. So uh, now let's invoke Python anywhere again. Uh, yeah, it's, so it's, it's local. It's, it's the local one. We don't need this anymore. And let's go to the web tab. Here we click create a new app. So uh, if you will subscribe to $5 per month account, you will be able to use your own domain name. But I don't really, even though I did subscribe, I don't, don't want that. Uh, I'm using that subscription to have an un unrestricted internet access uh, in my application because, because it really needs to make outgoing HTTP get requests. So in order to obtain that sort of functionality for this particular app, I really did need an internet access. That's the reason why I did subscribe to five dollars per month uh, plan and I encourage you guys to follow my way in case if you want to use this sort of application used in this particular video as an example so I just click next here and here you need to pick up uh, the framework that your uh, app is built with so my, my app is built with flask so I just click uh, to take flask and also I did use Python 3.6 at my development environment. That's the reason why I'm choosing Python 3.6 here as well. And uh, here is one uh, important stuff. So you need to specify the path to to your app here. So uh, here I type one time scraper. So that's the name uh, of the folder that was git clone just right now. And then there is an app folder and then the file name is app.py. By doing this, this would override the app.py uh, app file, but that's probably the most uh, quick and straightforward way of deploying things. So uh, as far as we have uh, the copy of app.py, usually it's not really that big, so it's okay that it would be overwritten. So I just click next here. Okay, so it creates the app and uh, configures the server and if you just now go to your username uh, at pythonanywhere.com uh, you see that your app is now alive and if you just go uh, to the files again uh, one time scraper app and app.py here so you see your uh, app.py file was overwritten, but uh, it's not a big deal basically. So you just go back to the repository, back to the repository here, and go to one time scraper and to app and app.py here, and now I simply just grab all the code from here. copy and paste over here and uh, when you're done with, with flask you don't really need this sort of a driver so you should have delete this driver definitely only the app definition itself and the routes would be just enough to run the app and now you need to click this run button here which would definitely probably uh, invoke the console stuff like that and okay and now also this update button okay and if you navigate uh, to your username.pythonanywhere.com again and just refresh the page here you have your application so you can say print your app is deployed so just control shift enter executing and the Python code has been executed and this is really so cool. So uh, one little note at the end of this video, in that case if you would like to use the one time scraper yourself and you want to use it for actually web scraping pur purposes as it is designed for, uh, you need uh, to subscribe to $5 per month uh, uh, subscription plan at pythonanywhere.com using uh, please be kind to do that using the referral link uh, 
which is available in, this, in the description below this video that would help to support the channel so in that case you would be able to make outgoing HTTP GET requests so let me just quickly show you that so I say import requests one more time and response equals requests.get uh, HTTP quotes dot scrape some sites are whitelisted at pythonanywhere.com even at free accounts probably maybe gross to scrape is whitelisted i don't remember to be honest so just print response.txt mm. okay so now we did execute the outgoing http get request from the pythonanywhere.com server which is really cool so uh let me sh uh, let me take the custom uh, one of my sites uh, which was definitely forbidden uh, to use with a free account at pythonanywhere.com so I say scraping kungfu.herokuapp.com and just execute this one more time And I have the response again. So it can make HTTP GET requests basically to wherever. So this is really handy if you're uh, a developer special, special, specialized in ad web scraping. So this is really handy tool for you in that case. And the one last and very important thing that uh, regards this particular app. So uh, that's basically the. Mm, one of the issues uh, I could have uh, this one of the troubles I could have got in basically so uh, if you deploy this app you definitely need to secure it using the password otherwise uh, some malicious users can uh, use this app to hack I don't know Pentagon or whatever and then you will get in a big trouble so in order to avoid that sort of behavior the very important step and that's that's really important is actually to secure your app using the password so uh, I just go back. Uh, I just go back to my account again and switch the web tab here. And here is a couple of security measures. So first, let's enable HTTPS, which is always good, and also enable the password. So uh, I just pause uh, pause the video. Just don't really want you to see my password here, and just click to reload my app also close this one and now I should have uh, get this uh, okay so now I have this sign in form here that forces me to use the username and the password that I just put it, uh, that I did input there uh, in the security part uh, of the application so this is it guys, uh, I, I really highly encourage you uh, protecting this sort of app by the password, otherwise you can get re into really big trouble, so please bear that in mind. So let me just pause the video and enter this stuff here. Okay, so after entering a valid username and password, I actually have uh, my app alive here again, so just, just well, this is it basically. Okay guys, so I hope that you learned something interesting from this sort of tutorial and this is it, yeah, so until next time and take care.